Okay, hello everyone. What we'd like to do is take a look at section 18 A and B, which is called Experimental Probability and Sample Space. Now, we've already done quite a bit with Experimental Probability and Sample Space in the IGCSC course, and so much of this will be review for you. But let's just go ahead and start from the beginning and just cover all the things once again. Now, let's say, for example, that we have a normal coin, heads and tails, and let's say, for example, that there's an even chance of us getting a head and a tail. So it's a 50-50 chance. Now, let's say, for example, if I flip this coin 10 times. Now, what the frequency table will do it will list heads and tails because those are the two outcomes that we're going to have. And what we're going to do is we're just going to count how many times we actually get a head and how many times we actually get a tail based upon flipping the coin 10 times. So, let's just say for example I flip the coin once, it comes out heads, flip the coin again, it comes out tails, it comes out tails, and it comes out tails, it comes out heads, it comes out tails, it comes out tails, and it comes out heads. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Comes out heads and comes out tails again. Okay. So notice that what we have here then for our frequency table is that by flipping the coin ten times, heads came out four times, tails came out six times. Okay. Even though we do have a 50-50 chance of getting heads and tails, that doesn't mean that we're going to have five heads and five tails every time that we flip it ten times. Okay, so based upon those 10 coin flips, let's say for example that this is the result that we get for our frequency table, number of heads 4, number of tails that showed up 6. Now the most important thing that we're going to have to really be, become very good at is being able to differentiate between all of these words that are written in green. What is a trial? What is an outcome? What is a sample space? What is a frequency? And what is the relative frequency? What do those terms mean? So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. What is, based upon this here, what is the trial? The trial is actually flipping the coin once. Okay, and if we wanted to go ahead and think about flipping the coin as, say, for example, an experiment, then we're going to perform the experiment once. And that's what we refer to as a trial. Now, what are the outcomes? Of course, the outcomes are what's actually going to come out as a result of the, tr of the trials. And, of course, in this particular case, we have either heads or tails. Those are the only two outcomes that you can possibly have by flipping the coin once. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the sample space, the sample space, again, is a listing of all the outcomes that are possible. So in this case here, the sample space, which is going to be a capital U for the universal set, is going to be equal to heads, tails, because those are the only two outcomes that are possible for this particular trial. Now, of course, when we talked about the frequency, again, what we're doing is we're counting how many times heads will actually show and tails will actually show for 10 times that we actually flip the coin and performed it, or performed the experiment 10 times. Okay, so the frequency then is just more or less counting how many times your outcome comes about through the number of times that you actually perform the trials. So the relative frequency then, what is that? That's a little bit different. Relative frequency will actually talk about how many times do we actually get ahead based upon how many times we've done the experiment. So the relative frequency for heads in this case is 4 out of 10. The relative frequency of a tail in this case is 6 out of 10. Okay, so that's what we're referring to with relative frequency. So tails, heads, we have 4 out of 10. And for tails, we have 6 out of 10. Okay, and this right over here is more or less going to tell us how frequent, relatively frequent, we should expect heads and tails to occur based upon actual performing of the trials, performance of the trials. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this then. This whole idea of relative relative frequency is really what we're going to be called, what we're going to call as call experimental probability. Because the probability, or in other words, 4 out of 10, which we can also think about as 4 tenths, and this one right over here is 6 tenths. We can change those fractions into percentages, and we can actually say that based upon the experiment, this is how probable we think heads and tails will be based upon the 10 times that we flip the coin. Okay? So that's what we were talking about when we refer to experimental probability. It's the relative frequency of the outcomes that you have, depending upon how many times you flip the coin or perform the experiment. So, a couple of other things that we want to go ahead and continue with then, is that probability then is really going to be considered the likelihood of an outcome occurring. So notice that even with the experimental probability results of the relative frequency, we can say the probability of a head coming out is about 40%. Tails, 60%. Again, based upon the results of the experiment. Now, a couple of facts that will obviously come into play is that all of your probabilities will have to be between 0 and 100%, each probability that you have. So, if we have a probability of 0, that meant then that you actually had heads 0, let's say for example, heads 0 out of 10 times, which meant that it actually didn't occur at all. So, in the same respect, if you have 100%, then that meant that that probability based upon the experimental probability results is like a 10 out of 10. So in other words, if you see a probability of 100%, it means that it always happens. If you see the probability of 0%, that means that it didn't happen at all or it never will happen. So that's the first fact. The second fact says if two outcomes, if you have two outcomes and each probability is 50% or one half, like in this case over here, of course then each outcome is equally likely. Now, of course, if you have four outcomes and each probability is, say, for example, 25% or one-fourth, then again, you could say that each outcome is equally likely. So, in other words, what's happening then is that the probabilities for each of the outcomes that you have are equal. Now, the other thing that we should also take into consideration as well is what happens to all of the different probabilities that are possible for that particular trial. So, for example, in this case here, we know that the probability, I'm oh, sorry, in this case here, the probability of getting a heads is 4 out of 10. Probabilities of getting a tail is 6 out of 10. So, of course, if we add those relative probabilities together, you get 10 out of 10, which is, of course, 100%. So that means that the only outcomes that you can possibly have are the outcomes themselves. There's nothing else that can happen, and the probabilities will always add up to 100%. Okay? So, uh, we, there is also some things with regards to the sample space and listing samples, listing the sample space, in this case over here, uh, in exercise 18b. But uh, I think that everybody is pretty familiar with that, and if you look through the text, you will be able to understand all the material that is contained there. So, good luck. Give it a shot. Let's see how everybody does in section 18a and b. Alright, see you next